Hey, you guys. It's your girl, Miss J, coming to you live and direct with something special today. Yes. So, get ready. Get ready. Yes. Hey. Give me just a second. I'm trying to get Miss Lizzie J in. Hi, girl. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. I feel like a talk show host. And today on Top of Gym. <laughs> we, yeah, you probably we, are. We have Miss Liz J. Um, so before we before we get started, um, I want you to introduce yourself, but I'm also gonna introduce myself as well. So and somehow you're breaking up. Are are you having an audio problem? Is that me? Uh, it's you because I can hear you just fine. Can you hear okay. me? Yeah, it's like crackling though. So maybe it's just me, yeah. Okay, it well, I, I hope it stops because I hope everybody else could hear me. Okay, okay. There go the general. Hey. hey. General. Okay, okay, so before we get before we get uh, started, I want to let everybody know what Dropping Gems is. So Dropping Gems is an extension of my whole for my business i do have a youtube page called dropping gym so i want everybody to check it out and what i do is i work with children teachers parents and small business owners focusing on these gym parent education teacher training small business development and raising the standards and value um, so that we can bridge the gap um, that is inhibiting us from pouring into our children the correct way. So Dropping Gems is an extension of that where I do business, like business consulting, where I'm helping give advice or tips to parents, teachers, small and small business owners. So today is very special for me because I have Miss Lizzie J here to help me out because this one is specifically for the business owners today. So Miss Lizzie J, tell them what you do. Hey everyone, I am Lizzie J. I am the One Stop Financial Service. And if you are looking for someone to realign your asset, then you are in the right place. That will be me. I help my community. Um, on financial literacy by simplifying the connection between business, personal, and taxes from startup to taxation by taking the time to teach each individual how to structure their environment to increase their um, li livelihood of making uh, healthy financial choices. And I may be reached at um, Raya Today, soon to be changed, but for right now it's Raya Today, if you need to have any consultation with me. Yes, y'all heard that correct. She does taxes and so much more. So much that I'm not even going to try to name it all. Okay? <laughs> but yes, check her out at Raya today. She is tagged in the little message that I put in my story and on my timeline. So I want everybody, if you need any financial help, go check her out. Okay? So today we are talking about specifically budgeting and keeping your personal separate from your business, okay? And this is very important to me because in my, with my experience with some of the things that I have been doing when I've gone and helped other small businesses. Um, particularly restructure the, the way their organization is running. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing I have to attack usually size operational plans, uh, those rules and regulations they put in place, but it's the budget. Half the time, they don't even have a budget. I'm like, do you have a budget? Is there a budget that I should stay in? Or is there, is there something I don't know? Is there something specific? with your budget it needs to be fixed and they be like oh, 
Oh, I don't have a budget for no. Um, I just spend money, and I'd be like, "Wow!" Uh, it's just like instant, instant headache, right? Because it's so much to uncover because of that. And then it makes it even worse when um, they mix in their business with their person. I'm like, you got to separate these accounts, okay? I can't, I can't figure out if you're paying for this lunch for the business or is this just your lunch because you wanted to eat because you're hungry, you know? So it's very important. And I think that um, people should hear it from somebody other than me. I no, I'm not a professional CPA or anything like that. I just know how to go in sometimes and for small businesses, but not large scale businesses. I haven't got there yet, but small businesses a lot of time they're operating in the red. And it's because their budget is messed up. So let's let's talk about that. What have been some of your experiences? Well, um some of my experience has been extremely exotic i must say some is some people is right on spot on the spot and some people is just out there like you just said and uh, for the re if i want to put it out there i am not a cpa either but i am a financial strategist i'm just independent financial strategist would deal with everything that is financial and i help people in that way but one of the first thing that i do when i come into people like just you just mentioned that just have everything every place and nothing organized is the first thing i ask them what is your business plan? What are you trying to do with the business that you have? And I want to hear it from them. I want to know if it's just a hobby. If it's right. something they're just doing because they're trying to make quick dollars. Or it's something that they're planning to scale to the next level and have for, the long, uh, for a long time. That's the first thing that I need to know. What are they doing? Because if they're just a hobby or anything, I'm like, go ahead, go for it. Keep right. doing what you're doing. But if they are trying to make it into a business, then that's where I come in and then I start beginning to ask them, okay, how much are you bringing in? Before I even tell them about budget, how much are you bringing in? Then I will know. If they know how much they are bringing in, then I will know if they need a plan mm -hmm. or they're just totally lost. Once yeah. those individuals could tell me, this is how much I'm bringing in a month. Oh, is that good? So you're on the right track. How much are you spending? Hey, I was just about to get to that. Mine is, yeah, okay, yeah. how much are you bringing in? But how much is going out? So we got to uh -huh. figure out something. Correct. Like, what? what is, what's going on? Okay. What are you spending money on? Okay. So why, exactly. We got to get down to the root cause of why you're in the bed and how we can fix this. So then Correct. I can go in and put things in place so that they could get that money in. Or a lot of times it's them not following their own rules and regulations that they put into place for that organization. And when you have people like that who's not following their own rules and regulation, you th then I'll ask them, do you think that um, you have too much on your plate? Because mm -hmm. now I'm gearing up to go in. So I'm going to ask them, do you think you have too much on your plate? What are you doing? Do you have enough time to watch your budget? I know sometimes when we first start off, we want to do it all ourselves. And it's good to learn what you're doing. It's good to know where your money is going. But do you need help? Because the bottom line, you're supposed to be focused on your business. And you should have someone focus on um, keeping, giving you a strong foundation. So if you do need someone to watch your books, then I'll be willing to help you. Okay. But it's your choice. And then if they say, yeah, but I don't have the money, I say, well, how much do you think it is? So when you're working with when you're working with these businesses, you're actually keeping track of their books, seeing what's right. going and what's going out. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't do that. I, I get the, the beginning part. <laughs> let's let's see, because I want to see how we can fix it. And I will make a new budget that they have to stay on track with, so that they could pull themselves out of the uh, pull themselves out of the red. And then they have to keep they have to keep in touch with 
the CPA or whoever is in charge of their financials to make sure that they're staying on track. So that's Correct. where they could come to you for mm -hmm. those type of services. Correct. Correct. That's awesome. Hey, okay. So I know who to I definitely know who to call when I gotta go in and and, and look at it and I'm like, oh Lord, here we go. Uh -huh. We gotta separate the stuff. Yeah, once you separate it and know how much is they are bringing in and how much they are spending, once you separate that, then you need to know how much do they need for their personal mm -hmm. and how much they're going to keep in the business. And we usually go with a 60-40 um, rules. So yeah. you, you help them separate their business account from the personal account as I, well? I certainly do. I certainly that is, do. That's awesome. I'm yeah. happy to hear that. Yeah. I make yeah. it I make it my business to make sure that they are set up correctly in order to succeed in life. Mm -hmm. I only go as far as they want me to help them. If they don't want me to help them, I'll be on a certain point and they want to think about it, then I let them think about it. But in the long run, I said this is what is gonna happen if you keep on the path that you are. Right. It's your choice. You could either let me help you or you could let someone else help you. Right. Um get your books right. And most of the time, I would say about, um, I have about uh, 80, 85 to a 90 percent turnover that they do go with me. Some of them just want to do what they want to do. And the next year, oh, exactly. they come back for tax season and right. they're still in the same place. And they're like, oh, how much, why are they taking so much money? I said, because last year I told you, you need to go to HR and have them take out more taxes. And your books are still the same way because you didn't want to go with me. But in the long run, you end up paying more. Mm -hmm. So if you pay me to do the books for you, I'll be glad to do the books for you. Some people um, is converted. Some people is just hard, knock, knock, knuckle. And it's just their belief and their discipline and the way they see money. Trust, so. trust and believe. And it's also because a lot of the time they are, they are scared. So let me let me give you a couple of examples for for me. So a lot of the time uh, I work with child care centers, right? Mm -hmm. So those businesses, we're we're really we're really uh, you can pull on our heartstrings if that makes sense. you know you can you can pull on that heartstrings and fees and all those types of things that's supposed to get paid. Mm -hmm. And and it just don't. So parents may say, "Oh, I'm having a hard time." And a lot of times, for a lot of business, I have people who are three, four months behind in payment, and I'm like, "Well, what, what's going on?" But then we have to go and take a look at their rules and regulations, parent handbook, all of those situations. I'm like, "You're not even following your own rules." That's 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 one. So we gotta implement these if they if they're not paying, if they're not doing this, if they're not we have to if they get this amount of time, they get this big of a grace period. And then if not, we have to stand by that because at the end of the day, you have to understand that this is your business. And in order to continue to care for the children or whoever it is that you're taking care of, whatever type of business it is, you have to have Income coming in. You have to have that income coming in to pay your employees and then to, to take care of whatever else that should be listed on your budget, whether it's food, utility, uh, transportation, whatever it may be. You have to meet those requirements financially. So I have to have these conversations and they and they scared like I don't want to lose this customer, but they're not paying you. You mm -hmm. can gain a new customer that's actually going to really pay you while you sitting here not trying to lose this person because they've been with you since they opened. And, and, and I get it, but you have to be able to follow those rules. And the second thing is they don't keep watch over what they're spending. You know, uh, we in child care, we have to provide breakfast, lunch, and um, snack right and we have to keep count and you have to pay for this food and all of that stuff right and a lot of times they will be just buying stuff no budget 
you they don't they're unaware that they could buy in bulk and save a lot more money so i have to revamp all of that and put that into the budget and and show them better ways in which you could save money right and then you got these rules in place so that you could grow your money so what would be your advice for people who are because i know what my advice but okay. i would like for you to share what would be your advice for people who are in this phase or heading towards this phase and they don't you don't want them to go there like just just as far as the budget part what would you suggest them do right away okay so for um first of all you have to look at it this way it's not they are the one with the problem in this area it is me and you with the problem in this area right here okay you ever heard the phrase you could take the donkey to the draft but you can't make him drink water mm -hmm. they have to want to drink the water oh they I have to, yeah they have to want the help mm -hmm. you could always want to help them and while you wanting to help them and they don't really want the help they say yes they need they need the help but they really don't want the help you're wasting your time and that's when you start dropping your prices in order to accommodate them mm -hmm. and when you do that you you lose um your how you say your motivation to move forward because then you know that you're not going up you're not scaling because you're dropping your price to accommodate to someone who does not really care about it you care about their situation more than they care about their situation so you can't really help them they gotta right. want the help when they want the help they will come to you some of them will come to you ask for the help once you give them the help they basically don't follow through on it mm -hmm. and when they don't follow through on it you left with you chasing them and then you have to learn not to chase them so the problem is not them as individual it's me and you because i'm talking about me and you because i know how i am and that's when i have to keep talking to myself and stepping back i have client that is making a lot of money but the minute i tell them to come and sit down and do their books they have every excuse on the, the sun what this happened the dog died the the goat pee on the paperwork everything under the sun why they can't sit down and do the books with you but at the end of the year they expect you to have it in order how could i have it in order with you when i keep asking you on several occasions to come sit with me the bottom line is you can't help an individual unless they want to help themselves mm -hmm. if they want to come, if they willing to, yeah, yeah go ahead i was going to say i i i agree with you i agree with you a thousand percent but that also goes i think that saying that saying philosophy that you're saying it just, it doesn't just apply with just me or you it applies to every individual business owner that may have that mentality as mm -hmm. to where they want to help this person or mm -hmm. help them do this but essentially you're not really helping them and you're not really helping yourself there you go there you go Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's 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 the issue right there. You can't want it more than the individual who really needs it want it because they will never see the value in it. But for those people who do recognize it, do really want to help, before they get to that stage of their budget just being all out of whack, getting them into that part where they're in the red. What would you suggest them to do to sustain and not get to that point? Well, that's what that's what I said in the beginning. When I meet those individuals, I always talk to everyone whether they want it or not, and then feel where they are. For those individuals, when I start speaking to them, I start asking them questions like normal questions. They don't even know that I'm really interviewing them because I make my question like I am just regular conversation and. Once they start responding and everything, I said, "This is what um, if you was, if you were, I was able to help you, would you accept it? If they are willing to accept it, or some of them straight come directly to me and I help them, but I really don't push it when I see the individual doesn't really want it. 
And it's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I should start doing that really, right? They're not saying, okay, how can I move forward? From the time they're doing that to me, I know they don't want it. I can't really go home feeling sorry for them. But guess what? I do. I still feel their pain and everything. And I said, only if they would listen. So those who want it, I will help them. Okay. Those but what want it, steps yeah. should they take? What steps should those people who want it take? Every, Not the every, ones who don't want it. Every individual is different. So mm -hmm. uh, basically, I want to, if for somebody to go into the red, I will start showing them what they need to do. I would like, if say a person is going to lose their business very soon, I need to find out whether they're already an LLC, if they're a corporation, if they're just a sole priority. I need to find out what type of business that they have. I will break it down and do um what we call, I, I call it a financial need analysis. Mm -hmm. I know other people can give it a different name. So I will get, sit with them, um, find out how, how much income they're bringing in, how much expense there is going out, what is really needed, how much is just need, and how much is actually want. Okay. Then once so I the break, first step is for them to come and sit down with you for a consultation. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Actually, okay. the consultation starts from the time I open my mouth and start speaking to them. So by the time, <laughs> we, we, by the we time, get that. By the time we they get come that, out with me, we in business. <laughs> but you know that there's some people, they out there, they, they skeptical. They don't really know that Correct. they're heading. They may not know that they're heading in a downward spiral Correct. because they're not keeping a watchful eye on their budget. So I'm speaking to those people. Who okay, do, do me a favor. Are in business. Give me a scenario. Give me a scenario. So let's do it that way. Okay. So I just opened up a business selling cakes or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm making I'm making money. My I have not separated my account. I really don't have a budget. Um, I'm just out here just just out here hustling but i do want to scale into a business right mm -hmm. um, but i don't i haven't even really put it in mind that how much is really gonna take so then i just start i just start buying stuff uh i just start i just start uh <laughs> buying things and doing all this now I'm I'm not keeping an eye on my budget. I'm not keeping an eye on how much I'm spending. And next thing I know, I have output more money than I'm bringing in. How do you so know that? If I don't, if I don't want to do that, if I don't want to be that person from the start, what would you suggest? Okay. What would be the first thing you suggest. The first thing I will suggest is that you sit down with um, me or someone else, or you could do it by yourself if you have the time. And then, like I said, the first thing I will do is break down how much I'm bringing in. And before you said, you said the person is just starting out the business. Yeah, uh, in the business. If they're just starting out the business, yeah, I, just, I, just, I, just, I just gave a scenario out there. I don't know. You put me on the spot real fast. Okay. Before you even open up the business, the first thing that you need to know if you have the money. Because if you don't have the money to run the business, where are you going? So you got to know if you have m the money to sustain the business if something is to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And once you have that um, money, that's the first thing you need. Okay, so you put that aside. Then you need to make sure you got um, what type of business and what are you doing. So you got to um, make sure if the name if the name is taken, if the name is not taken, and then you have to go with that. Then you got to think about website. If you're going to get employed. I'm just talking, I'm just talking about budget. No, we're not even talking about all the other. That's what I just asked you, sweetheart. I asked you if you were talking from scratch or are we talking? Okay, so let's go back to the budget. Okay. Yeah, for the budget, the budget. Portion, okay, for the budget uh -huh. portion, you need to know if you um your income. Again, you need to know your income and then you need to know your expenses. Once you know your income and you know your expenses, 
then you need to know um, what is needed and what is just want. And when you strategize in that the area, then you will know. After you finish figuring out what's coming in and what is your expenses, then you need to start the 60-40 plan. The 60%, 60 um, the 60 percent you know that is for all your expenses and everything. The 40% that you use it for um, whether you're going to um, leave it in the business to scale it to the next level. And that's the kind of strategy that you need to work with within the business. And it's kind of hard um for everyone is a little different some people could do the 60 40 some people may have to start at a lower gauge maybe um uh, 50 50 mm -hmm. so it all depends on each individual and the business that they are running so that's mm -hmm. why i asked for a scenario if you give me a, a scenario then i will get be able to tell you this is exactly what it is but the one i'm where i'm speaking from is just general Mm -hmm. A general point of view. This is what I do for people. First thing I do is sit down with them, find out how much is their um, income, how much is their expense, what is needed. Let me go with what is needed, what is not needed, what is just pleasure. Or, and then from there, then I turn them over to the 60-40 or I have to change the 60-40 to another plan. Once I'm working with that individual, the bottom line, I'm trying to get them to a 60-40 plan and to have them scale to the next level. So if they're just a sole priority, once they start making the money between 5000 5, to 6000 then I said, hey, look, it may be time for you to go into an LLC because now you have assets. As a sole priority, you don't have no assets. You may still take be thinking about the business. And you may not want to do the business after a while, but once you decide that you want to do the business and you have assets that you need to protect, then I move you on to an LLC. And then once you're, in an L once you're in an LLC and you start growing your business more, now you're making um, 10000 to 12000 to 8000 you're bringing in a month, then we're going to start thinking about are you bringing on employees once you have employees and everything and you, your business start going and you make it 60,000 or whatever be the case. Then we said, okay, it's time for you to scale to a corporate as a corporate. Then you could, um, then you could pay yourself as a W2 employee. So what, okay. So what does that for you, what does that budget look like? If a person, what, what would you do? What would be the details of what that budget should look like? For fixed expenses, non-fixed expenses. You're you, you're mentioning sixty forty, um, and then earlier sixty forty as a way to do the bank account as well, right? You when you're splitting up the the, the no, no, no. person no. doing the business. Okay, account. when you doing when you are uh, sole priority. You could have it all together, but I do not recommend that. I always recommend if you're doing business, start learning to do a business by yourself. So I, right off the bat, I, I I recommend that you split their account. You keep business with business and personal with personal. Exactly. Okay. Now, when you're doing with a LLC or you're doing a sole proprietor DBA in or somebody, then you will have an EIN. And with the EIN, I recommend that you do have a business account. You don't keep it personal. Because when you start mixing the two, that's where you can't really see where you're going. And you have to see where you're going in order to scale to the next level. So if that's what you're referring to, because I know you're asking me several questions within one. So I'm not sure which one to answer. I just, I just want to focus on on the, the budget aspect of the business. Let's just assume everybody has an LLC already. Okay. Let's just assume they already have an LLC. But the business is having an issue with budgeting and i'm asking you what are those steps that you would suggest to take if if you don't want them to fall into the red beforehand before they even you okay. know we, we want to prevent them from yeah. getting yeah, yeah. Like, and as i've been saying the very first step is to sit down with them and figure out what are their income and what are the expenses? That's the very first step that I would go with that. There's no other step that I would go into than making sure I know what they have coming in and what's going out. So for everyone, whether it's a business or individual, my first step as far as they budget, I need to know what's coming in and what's going out. Okay, so it's the same thing across the board for everyone. 
Yes. No matter what. Okay, so that's my first step that I will do with them. As far is as that the first and the only step? That is my first step that I will start with them because yes. And yeah. that's my only and actually that's my only step because if I don't know what they're bringing in or what's going out, how can I help that individual? As far as the budgeting, that is the first step I need to know. What's coming in? How much you um, make monthly? What are your ex mm -hmm. monthly ex uh, expenses? If I don't know that, then I don't know. All the other stuff that I explained earlier, I will talk about those stuff and ask them those stuff. But you said you don't want, you're just talking about strictly about the budget. So yeah, as far as budget, yeah. 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 So yeah. it's only one step to budget and know what you no, got no, no, coming no. in I and do. what's going out. Okay, let's hold up. That's only my step. Yeah, I <laughs> said somebody else have a strategy out there that is some way different for them to be organized and help someone. I would love to know it. Okay. So what is your, what is your step? So my steps is first you want to get a plan. I usually tell people to, like you said, you want to know what your goal is, right? So in order, in in my opinion. In order to uh, set a goal for yourself, you have to know what that goal is. So is my goal to make $10,000 a month, right? Yes. My goal is to make $10,000 a month. So what steps do we need to take to make this $10,000 a month? And then we could go from there to set the budget up. So when I'm going in, if I'm, I'm starting to structure uh, okay, Excel before you go any further, Before you go any further, what step do you take to make sure that they're making $10,000 a month? What steps do we take? Do you take to make sure that they... Yes, sweetheart, no commingling. The Deb got so... I ha I have no idea what is option. The go to so, option. The, the the go to options. Okay. Yes. So so this this is this for me. This mm -hmm. this is the steps that I would say. I have to know what your goal is so that we can get to that goal, right? Um, oh. it's not it's not if you're already in business. If you're already in business and you're up and running and you already have income coming in and you're not meeting your financial goal, for me, when I'm going in and I'm talking to these businesses, I want to know what what is the end goal. Because if I don't know what the end goal oh, is... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, sweetie. We, 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 we're talking about budget now because I already went I over that. Yeah, but we're talking about oh, budget. Okay. <laughs> Would you stop me while we're talking about budget? No, no, no. <laughs> We talking about budget now because you remember I talk about those stuff before. Come on, girl. Now let's talk about budget. Okay, so but the budget. end goal is incorporated into the budget. So if your end goal is, I'm using a low number because a low number is for people to count. <laughs> so if your end goal for your budget is to make ten thousand dollars a month, then we're gonna figure out how we could make that go and How in that you have to you have to, we have to structure a budget so with okay. that so with that we got ten thousand as go, well, right so now we need to know how much is coming in and and in each area that is coming in do you have fees do you have uh tuition do you have are you making uh are you selling shirts or whatever it is that you want that is your income then we need to know your outcome, all right? What is going out? And if you have more expenses or money going out than you have income coming in, then I can look at your budget to see or create a budget for you to see how we can fix that to make that end goal of $10,000. Does that make sense? That's, that's what I do, and that's what's been successful for me and help okay okay so if i come in and i tell you i want to make twenty thousand a month and you're already established and running yes. yes and you and i come in you will sit down what what would you do that's what i'm trying to find out i know what i would do i will start finding out what's coming in and what's going on but what do right. you do i tell you okay um mika i want to make um twenty thousand dollars a month Mm -hmm. I, I would okay. 
is, if you say, I want to make $20,000 a month, I would say, how much are you making now? And I said, I don't know. You tell me my budget because I like, I don't know. So I, I that's what I, I want to make. For. <laughs> I can't tell. Okay. So if you say, I don't know. You tell me your budget. Then we'll have to go through and I have to pull up. If you're using the system, I have to pull up the system and find those numbers. I can't, I can't help you without, I don't know your information. I haven't been working for you. you so, the bottom, so the bottom line, you need to know what I'm bringing in, right? Yeah, I agree and with you. Got, okay, okay. Yeah. And you, and you got to know. Okay, so I just wanted to know if um, we was on the same page. Cause can, you, can you still hear me? I can hear you very well. <laughs> okay. I, like, I like your iron too. You like what? Your lion or tiger in the background, yes. I love tigers. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I, I agree with you. I definitely have to know what you're bringing in, and I have to know uh, what's going out. Yes. So we agree that the only system is that they're out there that we know for right now is we got to know what's coming in and what's going out, right? Yes. You definitely got to okay. know that. Okay, what's coming in and what's going on? Okay, I just wanted then, to know because I like give me that gem if there's some other kind of budget no, out there, system out there because I you know I'm going to grab it. No, you definitely got to know what's coming in and what's what's going out. That will let you know in what areas you could fix your budget. Like if I could save money in this area and mm -hmm. make more money in this area. Correct. I have to see what you're, I literally have to see what you're spending money on. You know what I'm okay. saying? Yes. I, I have to see that. And I have to literally see what's coming in. Because a lot of times, what happens is a lot of people, they have mm -hmm. the money coming in. They Correct. just spend it so much, just, yes. and yes. not keeping yes. up with it. They Correct. don't know where the money is going. Correct. And then it makes it worse when their business account is intertwined with their personal. So I'm going to tell you this. I, I had this experience, right? I kept telling the person, you got to separate the account. You got to separate the account. Because when tax comes, it's going to be hard for that tax person. It's going to be real stressful. And, and they they were not listening. I, You know, you step back. I can only help you for as much as you want to help yourself, right? Correct. And then you step back. And then that time came, and it was it was a headache. And the tax didn't get done on time. And Correct. Yeah. And hit with penalties because they don't understand how hard it is to separate the business yeah, expenses is. from yes. personal expenses. I am how working with a client right now. Yeah. I'm, personally, I'm actually working with a client right now that I have to go through that and I have had problem with them trying to sit down with them and and um figure out what is what. And when you have something like that, they don't understand the price tag that you have to put on there because you have to go through all that. So I love the ones them that is who are pretty organized that everything is done. They come and tell me this is how much I make, this is how much I I spend out and that's much easier than to be going through when they have the personal and the business put together because you don't know what is what. And then sometimes they will have um, go to McDonald's, have this thing, and they want to use it as a business meal. Or like, who did you take? Which client did you take to McDonald's? Mm -hmm. And which the, um, the client that you have in pizza and whatever, are you buying um, medicine, painkillers and everything? You can't write those stuff off. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's a tin line. Yes, you could write it off if you know about the loopholes and everything. But if you have personal and, and business mixed together, then this is become complicated. So those type of individual for as far as my and as a tax person, I have them um, actually pull it apart themselves. Because if okay. I have to lift, if I have to lift my finger and pull it apart for them, it will be a charge. So they have a choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the end, they may lose some stuff because they had it, um, some write off because they had it mixed together, and they do that, not want me. Yeah, yeah, and they do not want me to go in and pull it apart because they're trying to save some money, saving some money from on my end, but spending it wildly on the next end, which they don't okay. understand. Whatever you pay me is still a write off for you the following year. So do you have any tips for people uh, to keep those 
those notes and things for you? Like, for instance, I work with this one person. No commingling. See, the young lady said that to. Um, no, I no get that. Yeah. I get that. So, what if they don't? Now we're talking about not commingling, but keeping up with those, with all that, that information that's needed for those taxes and for those write offs. So, like, I'm going to give you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share another experience. Give me, give me one second. Let me shout out to my sister. Hi, Desire. Okay. All right, go ahead. I'm going uh, to give you this one. So this, this person, whenever they, they kept their receipt, but they just kept the receipt in a bucket. Like, mm -hmm. they just, every time they spend something, they just, so now you got this big old, I wish I could show you, but they got like a big old box of receipts. And I feel like that could be a headache for a CPA or an accountant or a tax person, too, to go through all those receipts. So would Not you have, like, a, a, a better suggestion of people, of a way that people keep their information intact before they even come and you so that it could be a smoother process? Um, no, not necessarily. There's some people who do not like to do all that organizing and everything, but they are willing to pay the price that it takes for somebody else to go through. My only, my only hung up is the one who doesn't want to pay, but want to pay this low price and bring that whole box of stuff that you have to cipher through and then call you up and say, are you, are you done yet? Yeah. I like, are you serious? Yeah, so, I, I remember those days when I had to do that. I I had people who um gave me loads and loads and loads of stuff and just wanted to pay me bare minimum. And I like in the beginning, I accepted it because I was learning. But now yeah. I like uh uh <laughs> yes. So what so, yes. what are some of the things that you, that you have seen that other business owners do when they're organized that you like? Oh, oh, I have some clients. Oh my God. I have some beautiful clients. They will sit there and they will organize on a spreadsheet. They will organize everything. My, okay. ex my income and then all the expense that goes in to, and uh, what goes with it. And now that they know me and now, the, now that they know me, they even will put it in the category. They will put, this is legal. This is advertisement. This is blah. So, Okay. Those, those are my dream, 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 um, dream, um, how do you say, client? Okay, so let me run that, let me, let me, let me run that back for the people for what she just said, that she, that, that's, that's awesome for organization. So, a spreadsheet that lists what, what sections they are in, mm -hmm. like, is this for legal, is this for, and uh, payroll, if it's for food, whatever, they basically have like a version of their budget already for you. Yeah, but I'm hearing? yeah, but I don't recommend that because I don't want people to be going through that stuff. All I need them to do is um just list their uh, income and expense. I'm just talking about the people that been working with me for years know where I put everything. So instead of giving me the work to do, they just list it. You see? Well, what if I'm a, what if I'm not a person who hasn't worked worked with you before? That's what I, yeah, this that's is my what I first time mm -hmm. experiencing you. What uh what would be a great way for me to organize my finances so that it could be easier when it's time to do my taxes? Um, like like I said before, you, all I would need you to do is just put your all your income that you had coming in where it came in and the income for you made for the year and then your expense and then your expenses. And once you list that, I could be easily plug it where it needs to be. But if, when I have to go through the receipt and pull from this log and that log, that's something that I should have been done all year long when I was doing your bookkeeping. That's when I should have been doing your monthly bookkeeping. But so then I should have some... I'm sorry, I was asking. So should it be listed on a spreadsheet? Is that what you're saying? It, no, what I'm saying, you could list it anywhere. You asked me before, what's my ideal? What's my the um the ILD customers that I have had? That's those are the ones that do that, especially. But it doesn't have to be on a spreadsheet. It doesn't have to be in Excel or Google. All it has to be, you just list your income and okay. you list your expenses. It doesn't have to be technical. You can even handwrite it. This is my income, 
and these are my expenses. As long as it's listed, that would be a perfect for, for me. But if it's coming in a box, in a bag, and all that stuff, or that stuff comes with expense, more expense than the client will want to um, pay. Some will willingly pay it because they don't want to be bothered. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm so what I'm hearing for all my entrepreneurs and business owners out there, if you stay organized, it will cost you less to get the stuff done. But if you're unorganized and your stuff is all over the place, you're gonna have to come out of more money out your pocket. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you gotta think, you gotta think about the individual spending all that time trying to organize something like um, something like that, and that taking up their time with something else that they could be doing for another client. Mm -hmm. So the client that is more organized is one that is more easier to work with, which is not a problem because for any, I guess, for any CPA or any individual out there who has to deal with that they know that their client is going to pay that. Imagine you walking up to a CPA and you just um, give them a bag or a box of stuff and then telling them, okay, I only want to pay $100 because that's what I paid my last tax person. Not a CPA, but a tax person. You just say, I only want to pay you $100. What do you think what a CPA would do to you? That's you think they would take you on? They already charge you monthly, a monthly fee. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So, so is, it, is it different for your bookkeeping services? My bookkeeping services, yes, there's different prices because I have different plans. Like for my ABS tribe members, I do have a um a different budget. My um my how you say my ABS advisor colleague, I have a different budget for them also, and my clientele, I do have a different budget. And then I have the one for send a friend. Somebody say, hey, hook my friend up. I do have a bit different budget. So I have a total of um, four different budgets that I go by. Okay. And for the bookkeeping services, you do mm -hmm. it once a month or quarterly? How, how does I it do it? I do it once a, when the first client is first starting off with me. I do it once a month. I don't need to, after the third month, then I do need to sit down with the client and um, come up with a game plan of how are we paying um, the taxes. What are they going to be sending? How much can they pay the taxes? And if they're going to be sending it um, quarterly to the IRS or would they be putting it aside? Those are the kind of stuff that I will do. So my client, I don't just see them at the end of the year. I do see them um, either quarterly. Some of them, if I'm doing a monthly a budget with them, I have some individual that I see every day when I first started out with them. But those are the individual who is willing to pay the price. There's some people who does not want to pay the price. So I either see them monthly or weekly. And it all depends on your budget. Yeah. What does the everyday services entail? Uh, what does that look like? My everyday service intel is me talking to the individual, finding out what they in, what they brought in, what they take out, and they will be asking me questions. Should I um should I get this? I'm planning to get this, and I will tell them whether I I think they should wait or whatever be the case. As long as something to do with the business stuff like that, yeah. But basically, those individual we get we, we um we have such a tight bond, we we be talking about everything under the sun, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's, so that's, that's basically. Every, hmm? You say that, and that's for everyday individuals. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm I basically have seven clients now that I speak to every day. Yeah. For for book for bookkeeping services only. No, bookkeeping services monthly. That's what I'm monthly. talking about budgeting. Okay, budgeting. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So you keep your so you do your budgeting services separate from your bookkeeping? Yeah. It is different because some people does not um do bookkeeping. Some people is just um regular um how you say regular W two employee, but they just want um the budget to maintain so they could scale to the next level, whether they wanna go into business or they don't. Some people do not wanna go into business. Yeah, they love being a W-2 employee, and they make some of them make six figures. 
but they love where they're being at. They don't want to be the boss. If they could make six figures, why for them, why take on the hassle when they could make the same money and somebody else have to answer to all the stuff while they still make it the same money or even more than a person who is a business owner. So it all depends. Yeah. Huh? I say I, I get it. I understand. It's those people. Those people are out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of people out there like that. Just don't yeah. want to bother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's pretty good. And I have a lot of mixed, um, how do you say, it? mixed culture, mixed clientele. And it's so, it's funny. It's pleasing for me now. I know that I'm now bringing value. Mm -hmm. But before, it was just all about give it there, you keep on going. Like I would do a tax for, uh, back in the past, I would do a tax for a person and just sit there. And, okay, here's your return, boom. But now I actually having a conversation with them, seeing where they're going. And then I find out that they do have, um, they do have a um, business on a, a little side hustle. And then I will have to show them, hey, if you do this, you end up with more money because there's no need for, to be hiding that um, side business. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's so, how. I want to use your book teaching services. Where should I go? Repeat that. If I wanted to use your bookkeeping services, where should I go? Oh, you just DM me. You DM me right now. I have it at Ra at Raya today, which will be changing very soon. But that's where you DM me, and then I get I just put you on my schedule. We talk about it. Then I will send you out a contract if you want to move forward. If you may get the contract, you may sit on it for months and months and months, and then you come back. So it all depends on you as an individual where you want to go. If you want to get my um, what you call it? Uh. What do you call it? What were we just talking about? Lord, my brains. What is it called? Budgeting. If you want to get my budgeting um, service, then that's another, also another um, contract. And the budgeting service is done daily as well, or it can be done daily or monthly? It depends on the individual, what they want. If they want somebody to monitor them um, daily, then yes, I would do daily. If they want to do weekly, then fine. If they just want monthly, then they really don't have no need for me really but to do the bookkeeping so with your budgeting services this kind of sound like uh to me not only do you help them get that budget together and fix it but you help them maintain it on a daily basis mm -hmm. oh that's awesome cause i'm not i'm not gonna help you maintain <laughs> i get it together for you but you don't have to maintain it. That's awesome. That's awesome, y'all. Right there with you. Every step, every step. of the way. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yep. That's what they they have to make a big spending. Um, they do make sure they let me know before they do it. Because they so know what? Oh, they have to let you know before they spend and what's going in and what's coming out every day. No, no they have to let me know before they make that big spending. Okay. <laughs> Because they might mess up their books. If they're asking for help and they want somebody to monitor them every day, they can't go off and be making big spending and all that stuff. I'm like, if, if the bottom line is, if you ask for my service, let me do the service. Let me show you what I can do. If you're going off and just spending wildly, what's the purpose of me? So you do you do more than just uh, fix the budget to get them on track. You help them stay on track. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. How do you have all the time to do all I of this? Don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't. If you watch my schedule, it's from morning to night. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't. So it's 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 getting. I was just speaking to um Sean the other day, and he said you may want to yeah, just put, every, put put an hour a day and have all those. If that keep that business keep growing, you may have to do something else because that's going to really wear and tear on you. Like I said, I have seven clients that is in that position right now. I only have seven that is doing that, the budgeting. So for, do you have a cap for how many clients you would take for the budgeting? I don't. That's what I just just, just mentioned that. Um, <laughs> I was speaking to Sean about that. So he said that I'm going to really have to put a cap on it and then come up with a different plan afterwards. Yes. Okay. Hey, Nora. And, and is there at any point, is is there any point to where somebody has been working with you with their budget and um, 
their business expenses, their bookkeeping, and then they get to a point where they don't need your budgeting daily, but they still need your bookkeeping services. That, okay, they feel comfortable enough to scale back and to let you know that. Yes, absolutely. The um, all, all my contract is you can walk away when you want to. That's I don't awesome. have to tie anybody into anything. Yeah. Not I'm not speaking to them like you tying them in, but I feel like w with you being like, say for instance, with the budgeting, what mm -hmm. it sounds like to me that you work so closely closely with them that you're mm -hmm. explaining a lot of the ins and outs to them that where you're actually educating them as you're working Correct. for them and mm -hmm. that they could easily get once they get comfortable in that area of maintaining that budget themselves, you don't have to be there every day to do Correct. it with them because they understand how to do it and they could step back and you could just do their bookkeeping. I mean, you could step back and they could just maintain their budget, but you could probably offer your bookkeeping services on a monthly basis just to make sure that they're staying on track. Um, let's put it this way. If they're personal, just personal, then it would just be in the bu um, budgeted. If they're a business, I don't take one without the other. You got it? Okay. One okay. without the other. If they want the um me to budget with them, they have to do bookkeeping with me. But if they just want to do bookkeeping, it's fine. But if they want to do, they have to do um both when they um just um when they first come in it, when it's a business. I can't take a business when I'm just budgeting and I can't see their books to make sure that they really are doing what they're saying they're doing. No, I understand that. I'm saying at a point, do they ever get, because you're working so closely with them on a daily basis, mm -hmm. that they understand everything that you're teaching to them. Does Correct. That make sense? Yeah. Yes. So then it uh, gets to a point where they don't need you every day, but you can still check on them through bookkeeping services. Am, correct. Is yes. that not an option or am I? No, no, no. It's a, it, they could do that. They don't need to. The, um, the budgeting portion of it can go away, mm -hmm. but the bookkeeping portion will, um, will not go away. And if it's a business, it's I have to be doing both. If you want me to do your budgeting, you have to have me do your bookkeeping. Or you could just have me do your bookkeeping alone. I do not do a budgeting for a business without doing the bookkeeping. That's what I'm saying. But when it's a personal, I just do the budgeting because there's nothing to bookkeep. They just want me to help them budget. That's what I was trying to say. So I hope I explain it better. You know me and my wonderful English. Did I explain it better? <laughs> Uh, I think I'm still a little confused. Okay. Hey, Plummerville. Okay. What I was saying is that if you're a business, right, and you come to me and said, I need you to help me with my budget, I will tell you, I can help you with your budget, but in order for me to help you with your budget, I have to be also helping you with your, your book. Right. Because I get that budget. part. So I will have two. Or right. if you're a business and you just want the bookkeeping, it's fine. But if you ask for the budgeting, you must do the bookkeeping. Okay. So the budgeting so what, with the bookkeeping. Yeah. But I, it, got, I got that part. I'm saying okay. for the people that you work with on an everyday basis, the budgeting, right? Mm -hmm. Because it sounds like you're teaching them as you budget with them, right? Mm -hmm. That they might get to a point where they don't need you to budget with them every day, still use your own services. Yes. So you, oh. you still offer bookkeeping services, so they could grow out of that budget part. That's what correct. I'm yes. 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 Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They don't have to have the budgeting, but they must have the bookkeeping for business in order mm -hmm. for me to doing be um doing anything with them. So the bookkeeping is a must. The budgeting is not a must. Okay. Yeah. And on on the personal, the budgeting is a must. There's no need for bookkeeping. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Okay. I got it. I got it. I just want to make sure I'm not confused because then it might be yeah. listeners or whatever. They might be confused. Oh, yeah. They are. Yeah. Yeah. Thank so, you. I think, did we cover everything? 
the most I think so. budgeting. I think so. Like, yeah, and then um with the budgeting, everybody plan is not the same. No, everybody mm -hmm. has different, but everybody business yeah. is not the same. Everybody business is yeah. different, structure, the operation. So yeah. everything will be different. But the, um, what should remain the same is you should keep track of what's going in and what's coming out. Correct. What's coming in and what's going out, however you want to say it. Did you, did, did you, you audience have a question? Try to be organized, huh? Did the audience have any question? Does anyone have any question? Yeah, does anybody okay. have any question? Yeah. Oh, they're in here, so just wondering if they had some question or some concern. Yeah. Um, did I mess this up? Can you hear me still? I can still hear you. Oh, okay. I just want, I just was trying to move the screen to see if I saw any question in there. Hey, Promoville. Yeah. Yeah, so if no one has any question, you can always DM me if you need help in my budgeting or you need help with your um, tax service. If some of you have not filed tax in years, I could help you in that area. And you can reach me at Raya today. And On Instagram, do you have a Facebook? Instagram, yeah. No, I do not have a Facebook. I am not a tech savvy person, so I am learning the technical world. So soon as I get the, the IG down, I will be moving on to Facebook. And then from Facebook, I will move, be moving on to Twitter. I probably might do them both because I do have a Twitter account that I never use. But I'm not tech savvy. But this is the this is the generation to do it in and get it right. So I'm learning all of this. So I almost could consider myself an IG guru for now. <laughs> <laughs> IG is awesome. Um, yeah. I do work with IG a little bit more than Facebook. Um, but I, I, I get you on that. So me, the teacher and me, just want to kind of sum up the conversation for everybody to let them know what we were talking about, which was essentially budgeting and how important it is, is to keep a budget and keep your business income and your personal income separate. It right. will save you a lot more money in the long run if you are able to stay organized with your expenses on what's coming in and what's going out, keeping track of it, whether it's written or in a spreadsheet. Um, if it's unorganized and you bring it to someone like Miss Lizzie J, who does taxes in all of these services, and they have to go in and figure it out, it will cost you more money. So the best thing to do is to stay organized, um, stick with your plan, be aware of what you're spending and what's coming in, what's coming out, so that people of, um, of her nature who works in that field can help you to the best of that ability and help you get more bang for your buck to help you find more money and all those little trinkets that you know tax providers do. And you wanna you want those services. So you want to be organized. I would suggest you be organized. Even me coming in and just helping with stuff, the more organized you are, the better. And so summing this up, be aware. Number one, be aware of what's going in, what's coming out. Keep your financial Stuff organized, written down, fresh, however you want it. And then if you need help, and if you feel like you need help before you get to that red spot, please mm -hmm. reach out to Miss Lizzie J at Raya. Not at Raya.com. I'm gonna say at Raya.com, but at Raya on Instagram. And mm -hmm. she can help you with your budgeting and bookkeeping needs to help you stay out of the red and operating fully to your best potential and get all that money. In. You don't want you playing hide and seek with your money, boo. Okay? Don't be playing hide and seek with the money. You want to get to the bag. Get to the bag. Yeah. Did I sum that up good? Did, 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 did I point with everything? 
Yes, you did. Oh, Miss Laura, if you're still in there, I do need to reach out to you. We have to talk. If you're still in here, I don't know if she's here. Can you tell who's in here still? Uh, no. I, okay. I think Palmerville is in. Okay. Yeah. So I hope that you guys like this edition of Dropping Gems. Well, I am I love it. I love shedding it. a little light to help you shine. Okay, we want y'all want these businesses to strive and do good. And if you don't want to hear from me, here you go. You got somebody else you can hear from. Okay, a, pro a tech professional. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Sissy J, for coming on out. I definitely appreciate you coming out to the live. Thank you very much. I have fun. I felt like a TV host. Okay, Lucky Lisa. I'm saying, hey, Lisa, how are you? You have any question for us? You know, it's Lisa, right? Uh, I don't know. Lisa. Yeah, you do. Hi, Lisa. Yeah, you do. Private yeah, you do. building. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know her. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions before we leave out? Anything that you would like to know? Um, any clarifications on any other conversation that we had today? Uh, anything? Anything, people? Yeah. Now, Miss Lisa is typing something. She say, yes, you do. I'm not sure what she's talking about. Did you ask her a question? Oh, I think she's saying, yes, you do know her. I think that's what she's saying. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I know. Is this yes, just a different know I know who she is. Okay, I got it. I got it. Not right now, okay. but... Okay. okay. Oh, oh, else ask Lizzie. <laughs> yeah, okay. All yeah. right, so I guess we are out. I will um, I'll call Make you. Make sure y'all schedule Miss Lizzie J ahead of time, because clearly y'all couldn't tell by this conversation. She is booked up. I was just happy she was able to get some time in for this live. You heard me? <laughs> All they got to do is schedule it. Too busy. I mean. Yeah, they. I just I put it on a schedule. Yeah. Yes, yes, y'all gotta uh y'all gotta book her ahead of time so she can get you in. Busy woman out here helping okay. the business world. <laughs> That's right, Lisa. Okay, sweetie, it's been a pleasure, man. I knew this was gonna be fun, and it sure turned out to be fun. So I do like it, man. You do pull those questions out. <laughs> Yes, yes, you yes. So I did love every minute of it. So you're pretty good. You're pretty good at this. You should do this more with a lot of people. Oh, I, I plan on having another live. And, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. I, I it, It's the teacher in me. I got to ask those questions so everybody can understand and get clarification so there's no misunderstanding. So that's, that's all. But thank you very much. Thank you. All right, sweetie. I'll talk to you later, okay? All right. Yeah. Thank you guys for showing up. Y'all have a great day. Peace, y'all.